Mayapan was the largest ancient Maya political capital of the post-classic period, occupied from around 1100 to 1450 AD. It exceeded the size of all other lowland towns or cities in Belize, Guatemala, and Mexico by an order of magnitude. It was a key nucleus of political, religious, and economic activity. Mayapan is probably the most nucleated of Maya cities. Um, its urban density is higher than um, most other Maya cities, although um, urban density is a, a relative term. Uh, certain parts of earlier Maya cities were as densely inhabited as Mayapan, but Mayapan is walled and, and concentrated with, uh, say, 12,000 people living within the wall. And so it's a good place to study um, more conventional ideas of urbanism. The Great Wall of the city has 12 gates, including seven major gates with vaulted entrances. This parameter was clearly defensive, and the gates controlled pedestrian traffic entering the city. Mayapan was a cosmopolitan, international city that was linked to a wider network of allies and trading partners well beyond the northern Yucatan Peninsula. Aquí en nuestras espaldas tenemos este mural que se le conoce como el mural del pescador. Se le da ese nombre porque cuenta parte de la historia que este mural está representando la gran conexión que tuvo Mayapan con Tulum cuando Mayapan iba por la obsidiana hacia las montañas de Guatemala. Principalmente se habla de un volcán llamado Ixtepe. Entonces con ellos regresaban por medio de canoas El punto específico donde nuevamente pisaban la península de Yucatán era Tulum. Ahí ellos practicaban la pesca, intercambiaban alimento, de igual manera la sal, para poder alimentar a su gente, que eran semanas caminando de Tulum a Mayapán, lógicamente. Economic and political ties were cemented by shared elite culture, regalia, and rituals. Information flowed across linguistic and geographic boundaries, and local art and architectural traditions incorporated aspects of symbols, myths, and traditions embraced broadly among interacting post-classic cultures. Direct international ties are also recorded. Each one of these halls has a different uh, assemblage, different kinds of activities were going there. Some uh, look like you might have People that might have lived there performed specific activities like feasting. Uh, for example, the hall on the other side of these buildings that you see here in the uh, Round Temple complex was burned to the ground and had a bunch of serving vessels on it. Whereas this hall in front of the temple of the serpent nest here was covered with incensaria. So uh, most of the activity there was ritual in nature. And some of these other halls have a mixed assemblage of feasting rituals and, um, uh, and occupations of a short duration. There's no evidence that these were really uh, lived in on a permanent basis. The Kakom rulers invited non-Maya Gulf Coast peoples into the city who served them at one point as mercenaries. Se funda aproximadamente en el año 1100 y fue fundada, como se había comentado, por la familia Kokom. Y la familia Cocón proviene de Chichen Itza, una familia de ahí que se sale por problemas internos. Entonces ellos llegan a este punto que es Mayapán y logran rodearla con la muralla defensiva para protección de sus enemigos, igualmente para delimitar su territorio. Some deities from Central Mexico and mural styles also suggest first-hand knowledge of foreign traditions. The name Mayapan translates as the Banner of the Maya. This city was never a lost or forgotten ruin, as it fell only one century before Spanish and Maya historical chronicles were written. Informants and some of the authors of these 16th century documents were descendants of the lords of Mayapan and recalled much of its history. And we don't have to ask questions that people asked for earlier Maya cities, such as, was there a market system? You know, was it important to everyday life? How independent 
were um, households um, living in the urban zone because we had the testimonies from Mayapan as well as uh, towns that survived the fall of Mayapan and were alive and thriving places when the first Spaniards arrived. From these accounts, we know that Mayapan was referred to by several names, including Zaklatun or Zaklatun Mayapan. Zaklatun refers to either the place where white pottery was made or was erroneously recorded from Zak Aktun, White Cave, according to Ralph Royce in his 1933 analysis of the book of the Chalam Balam of Chumayel. Some of the fancier pottery at Mayapan has a cream or buff base slip color, so the first translation is plausible, although this type of pottery is more rare than the more common mama red vessels of this site. Mayapan has over 26 cenotes, or caves, some of which were important water sources, so Roy's second alternative also makes sense. The first account of European exploration of Mayapan is that of John L. Stevens and Frederick Catherwood in 1841, who described and illustrated the principal pyramid, the Castillo of Kukul Khan and the Round Temple, and reported the city wall. Charles Brasseur de Bourbourg, Augustus Le Plongion, and others visited in the late 1800s. Scientific work was initiated at Mayapan by the Carnegie Institution of Washington in 1938. Well, that's another thing that's fantastic about working in Telchiquillo is you are working in, in a lot of cases with folks who, when they were kids, were working with the Carnegie Project. You know, my... Yo estoy como 17 a 18 años con ellos. Sí. Desde que empezó la carretera de Mérida, el que viene. Una temporada allí y otro en Mayapán, otra temporada aquí, otro en Mayapán. The Carnegie team studied most of the city's major monumental buildings and embarked on a mission of settlement mapping and investigation of dwellings. Mayapán is now receiving new recognition as one of the most important ancient Maya cities. Mexico's National Institute of Anthropology and History, or INA, has been restoring the site's monumental center since 1996, and it is open to tourism. These downtown temples, shrines, and colonnaded meeting halls were built and used by important lords and priests of the city's confederated government. Restoration has transformed this sector from a jumbled set of rubble mounds overgrown with trees to a majestic city of gleaning masonry temples, colonnaded halls, shrines, and altars. From 2001 to 2009, the long-standing tradition of household archaeology at Mayapan was amplified in seven seasons of field investigations by the Proyecto Económico de Mayapan, directed by Marilyn Masson, Carlos Pereza Lope, and Timothy Hare. Eh, pues es una, inclusive, de las, de las preguntas que uno siempre se hace, ¿no? O sea, eh, ¿qué voy a, a encontrar en, en Mayapán? Eh, si casi todo, casi todo, digamos, ya eh, tenemos conocimiento, ¿no? De lo que, eh, de lo que es Mayapán. Hay una gran cantidad de, de documentos escritos, creo yo, que sí fue una uh, experiencia, digamos, muy agradable saber que pues no todo estaba escrito, ¿no? que había más información y mucha más información que no eh, pensábamos que íbamos a poder eh, documentar. Mayapan and post-classic period Maya society were traditionally viewed in a negative light by archaeologists. This era follows the classic period, when more major cities existed, larger public architecture was built, royal kings were buried in lavish tombs, and when durable hieroglyphic records, many carved in stone, were prolific. There's a big, large uh, market area, and um, 
they had specific areas designated for different use, and this is different from classic Greek cities, where you have palaces juxtaposed with public buildings and temples. The post-classic period was originally known as the decadent period. As monumental buildings are smaller, political governance took the form of council rule, investment in royal burials ceased, and most writing occurred in codex books that were burned by Spanish priests. Decadent, you know, I will say that Mayapan did not preserve as well as a lot of classic period centers. There was a lot more perishable materials being utilized, so the remains look more beat down. Um, the scale is smaller, there's no doubt about that, um, but we had a 250-year occupation. It's, I always refer to it as the Pompeii, of, you know, um, without the ashes, without the volcano. Uh, very little soil has covered the surface because it's a located in a very remote, uh, dry place of the peninsula. And so you can walk across cleared portions of the city today and see the, the rooms, the room divisions in the houses, the activity areas, the workshops. You can identify kitchens and storerooms and uh, beekeeping houses, and um, as well as the houses, the palaces, the temples, the shrines and so on. So it's um, really just waiting to be studied. Some have characterized the classic to post-classic transition as one from a more theocratic society, deeply rooted in religious power, to a more secular one with greater emphasis on commerce. Post-classic Maya peoples had many similarities as well as differences with their classic period ancestors. They were a deeply religious society that venerated their ancestors and many Maya gods, whose roots can be traced to the origins of society in the pre-classic, such as the rain god Chalk and the maize god. Hacen falta más estudios de la distribución, ¿no? De los porcentajes de los mate de ciertos tipos o ciertos grupos cerámicos, ¿no? Pero sí hay diferencias, es decir, sí han habido algunas diferencias en cuanto a presencia de ciertos materiales en algún grupo arquitectónico y a veces disminuye en otros, ¿no? Y uno de estos materiales es, por ejemplo, el grupo Paul Bosch, que a veces lo encontramos en ciertas estructuras o en ciertos grupos arquitectónicos con gran abundancia, pero hay estructuras habitacionales en donde prácticamente aparece, aparece mínimo, ¿no? Es decir, o casi no aparece nada. Es decir, allí se ve que hay, hay algo, ¿no?, que está pasando con estos materiales. También en, con los incensarios, ¿no? Tenemos, si bien hay estructuras que son ceremoniales. Eh, yo pienso que es más específico encontrarlos en Mayapán y de hecho posiblemente eh, muchos de ellos los estaban eh, fabricando en, en Mayapán. Eh, sin embargo, los incensarios pues es digamos una moda cerámica este, para el periodo postclásico. Interesting difference about Mayapán is that there are no royal tombs here, um, there are no funerary temples. Now both the, the Pescador temple and the crematorial temple had shafts that went all the way from the top down into bedrock, full of sacrificial victims. Um, but uh, people of Mayapán, both elites and commoners, like buried, um, buried their dead in their household compounds, either in private tombs, within their houses, or within the patio or surrounding area. Hemos encontrado, entre otras cosas, eh, pues una gran cantidad de entierros, de osamentas humanas, que nos dicen mucho ¿no? de, de, cómo, de cómo fue, digamos, eh, la vida de las personas que vivieron allá. O sea, definitivamente no fue nada fácil. Se ve cómo tuvieron etapas o momentos, eh, digamos, históricos de la, de la ciudad de, 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 de Mayapán, en donde sí hubo digamos, eh, una gran cantidad de eventos bélicos. De alguna manera nos pueden dar eh, indicios de qué función tenían ciertas estructuras, ¿no? Por ejemplo, si nosotros hallamos incensarios, pues la, una gran cantidad de incensarios, podemos pensar que era de carácter ritual o si encontramos también material 
en doméstico, decimos, no, aquí estaba una cocina, había algo, ¿no? Es decir, nos da información en ese sentido de, de función, vamos, vamos a suponerlo. So here we have a frontal view of the Sala de los Reyes, so named, because each of the columns you see here, these pillars that supported the roof, were at one point decorated with stucco figures, which we believe were elite personages. Um, it appears that it served as a council house, probably where all of the various controlling lineages at the site would meet um, in what they call the multi pol or a joint confederated government. Um, so this was likely where they would hold those meetings. Mayapan was a city of occupational specialists, and all households were dependent on local, regional, and long-distance trade for the goods essential to daily life. Many residents were craft specialists, making obsidian blades, shell ornaments, pottery vessels, figurines, and effigy censers, stone tools, and weaving and embroidering lavish cotton clothing. Craft specialists sometimes operated from a single house or pair of houses in the neighborhoods, although one district has been identified as a crafting neighborhood, just to the west of the monumental center. Most craft industries relied on imported raw materials, and this fact adds a layer of complexity and distant dependency to our understanding of Mayapan's market economy. Crafters had to acquire imported marine shells, non-local chert or chalcedony cobbles, and obsidian blade cores, over 90% of which came from the Ixtapec volcano in Guatemala. Few spindle whorls are found at the city, in contrast to high numbers of bone weaving and embroidery tools, suggesting that the weavers also relied on imported cotton thread and focused on the later stage of cloth making. Surplus production for the marketplace was important for at least 29 houses investigated thus far by the PEMI project, representing about half of the houses studied. Non-crafting house lots were engaged in agricultural activities, as well as military and domestic service. It is unlikely that the city would have been able to grow all of the food needed annually for its population of 17 to 20,000 people, especially during the drought years that were frequent during the post-classic period. The profits from craft industries and trading would have helped some residents of the city to purchase luxury goods, as well as food traded into the city in times of need. Commoner crafting households tended to be wealthier than non-crafting households at the city, which indicates that they had the option to sell their products for profit in the city's marketplace. Perhaps the most interesting facts about Mayapan pertain to its political organization. It was the central government of a confederacy that united political rulers of townships covering much of the northern Yucatan Peninsula. This council rule system seems to have its origins at Mayapan's immediate northern predecessor, Chichen Itza. It is often contrasted with the divine kingship monarchical system of earlier classic period Maya sites, and it is fair to say that this post-classic organization was more bureaucratic with formal mechanisms for power sharing. However, the Council of Mayapan was dominated by one or two of the most ancient and powerful noble families who acted in the capacity of paramounts throughout its history. The Kakom family was the most powerful and its major rival was the Zhu family. Although ruling council members wielded much influence, this was a hierarchical government. The fall of Mayapan during Katun 8 Ahau, 1441 to 1461 AD, was caused by internal factional strife. The Zhu led a revolt against the Kakom, whom they executed. Important buildings at the city were burned and it was abandoned. The Zhu and some of their vassals may have lingered on at the city until an epidemic drove them out between 1481 and 1500 AD. In 1441, when we talk about a rebellion, 
rebelión de la gente del pueblo contra sus señores importantes quienes habitaban esta parte. ¿Por qué fue esa parte? Se dice que el señor Gokom ambiciona mucho el poder y comienza a comercializar con su propia gente, intercambiándolos, vendiéndolos como esclavos en diferentes culturas. Entonces, eso por su parte lleva a la molestia del pueblo. Y esa misma molestia los llevó a que destruyeran la parte principal de Mayapán. Esto, templos, palacios y adoratorios. Y también que mataran casi a todos sus señores, casi a todos los Kokom. Given enough credit, I think, for its accomplishments as a civilization, or what we scientists would term or its urban complexity. For so many years, people uh, felt that to exhibit, exhibit evidence of urban planning, a city has to have an orthogonal grid. And there are principles of planning um, that we see in the, the strategic location of outlying monumental groups and gates and elite residences and the maze way of house lots that penetrate, uh, that form these lanes that traversed Mayapan. You know, some of the, the pedestrian lanes that we've tracked have been uh, relatively direct. They lead from the gate to the focal monumental groups in the center, to the key cenotes, right to the monumental center and to the marketplace. They link up to the city's more traditional Maya rows, the raised white sock bays. And so there are major cardinal thoroughfares that traverse the city and, and connect the gates to the interior. And then between that is a mazeway of lanes. And I do think you're right. That's very much like uh, the medieval sensibility um, of, of having um, um, a system of thoroughfares that isn't immediately um, recognizable or for a Roman type plan or a Renaissance type plan of a gridded city. Pienso que había una, una población también que, que fue creciendo, creciendo y creciendo y que muchas veces, eh, y, y que llegó un momento en que tuvo que crecer afuera también de la muralla, ¿no? Um, initially we did it because for decades there was a very finite population number in the Carnegie Report and sort of a, well, series of statements in the Carnegie Report that essentially dismissed anything outside the wall as even existing. Pretty much wrote it off when you look at sort of their assessment. It's, uh, there's, there's a smattering of stuff, but it's inconsequential. Um, but when you got anywhere outside the wall, it was tons of stuff. It was really obvious. Any quick trip out there. So we, you know, decided we had to, to catalog what was out there and get a, get a feel for the total population and look at activity areas, etc. So. I think you've been talking to others. We also have the outlying um, monumental groups in the neighborhoods which replicate the functions of those in the site center. So these are uh, what Kevin Lynch has referred to as focal nodes in the city. Um, places like Eat Small Chen um, brought to the neighborhood level um, the, the gods and the rituals associated with them in the periodic celebrations. So um, the Monumental Center was not the only place uh, where um, the institutions of the Mayapan state were centralized. Rather, it um, spatially conquered the city landscape through um, facilities like Itzmal Chen and uh, the other big groups by the Ishkoton Gate T, Cenote Ishkoton by the North Gate D. The industry of archaeology at this site has had largely positive economic and social effects on local residents of Telchaquillo, Yucatán. In 1996, we were in Mayapán for the first time, working with a group of workers who are from Oxcutzpa. And then, at that time, we were working as peores y de repente cambiamos de trabajar o sea ya aprendimos lo que ellos saben porque de antes solo peor y entonces cuando hace como unos cinco años o cuatro años ahora, y entonces don Carlos Peraza nos contrata como albaniles 
porque ya estamos avanzados ya sabemos todo lo que es el trabajo entonces y ahora cuando van a ocupar unos albañiles no los ocupan a ellos a nosotros no los ocupamos aquí en Techequío hay como unos 20 albañiles más This small village is located one kilometer from the Monumental District and is inhabited by families whose first language remains Yucatec Maya. These local villagers have contributed greatly to the research by sharing their knowledge of landscape, customs, environment, and foodways that provide informative analogies concerning past practices. Ellos viven eh, casi idéntico, o vivían casi idénticamente como viven hoy en día los pueblos de Yucatán. Cada quien con su terreno, en el terreno las chozas, el delimitado por la albarrada, conocida la, la delimitación como las famosas albarradas, la choza, el patio, el patio se conformaba de una pequeña milpa, porque igual de ahí sembraban calabaza, chile, frijol, como lo hacen los pueblos hoy en día. Eh, criaban sus animales, algunas partes lo hacen hoy en día, igualmente se dedicaban a la cacería. And definitely the economic production distribution was really interesting because it seemed to overlap modern land use really, really well. Um, in my case, I, I ended up actually mapping several local um, house lots that were in the community because when you start to look at the foundations of the houses, you start to look at the foundations of things like animal pens, particular turkey pens, things like that, um, you see that it's the same architecture, roughly as, well, the same would be an oversimplification, very similar architecture. And you find very similar functions being represented in all the house groups. So when you start looking at, in the post-classic outside the wall, you basically had these Alborada dry laid stone walls that were roughly rings at the tops of each of these little hillocks, these LTOs that we have at the site. So they're sort of like their own little hill fort almost, but they're sort of self-contained and there'll be a residential structure or two, depending on how large, sometimes with a couple for extended family. Um, then there'll be a number of, you know, small platforms and round cobble platforms that we identified as granary or grain storage, etc. And, and when you start looking at these modern compounds, you see basically all the same functions being represented in very similar architecture, which, you know, if you get rid of the perishable, the stone foundations look really, really similar. The main difference is that it's now a Spanish rectangular grid pattern. Trabajamos con Marilyn dos semanas. Como aquí nosotros, como esto es una mata de chile, foto, limones, naranjas, todo. Como es el jardín de la casa, o sea, lo que es el, los árboles frutales. Y entonces nos hace preguntas, ¿cuántos años se siembra y da fruto? Sí, en eso estuvimos con ella. A lot of those families do have those five, six hundred year roots. So that's fascinating. There's more than one Mayapan. There's the Mayapan that was um, probably founded through multiple sets of governing elites um, over the course of a hundred years. There's Mayapan in its apogee in the 13th century, in its glory, in an era of prosperity. There's a Mayapan that uh, struggled with um, famine and drought and warfare, and um, Mayapan tends to be viewed as a city that could barely centralize its government because of this fact, uh, fractious rivalry between groups like the, the Shu family and the Kokom family. Well, that's how the city fell. That was the, you know, it's being judged by its collapse. Porque, pues nosotros no, Bueno, en, en español diríamos, no somos todólogos, ¿no? O sea, no podemos saber de todo, ¿no? Entonces, la gente, yo creo que eh, nosotros eh, muchas veces tenemos que facilitar, o sea, dar facilidades a otras personas para que hagan, eh, digamos, eh, estudios más, más detallados de materiales, ¿no? You know, we're operating on a lot better data than what Carnegie had. We have all of their data, and we have some data that shows that their data is wrong in some cases, and we have a lot of data that confirms things that they found, and more importantly, we just have new data, additional data that fills out the picture. 
you know, you can grab the elephant tail and describe the elephant, or you can look at the whole elephant and describe the elephant. You know, once you got the full elephant, you're better. But we're still picking away. I mean, 50, 60, 100 years from now, there's still going to be new discoveries available at that site. It's substantial. And every time we go down, we find something that is genuinely new and surprising. Post-classic Maya civilization um, might have been on the brink of a recovery when um, the first Spaniards floated ashore uh, from the Valdivia shipwreck in the early 1500s, but it didn't have time because it was just recovering from the, that cycle. And um, so I think that uh, there's more to Mayapan than its collapse. There's more to Mayapan than a, a monolithic view of this, it having been uh, the same from its beginning to its end. And so um, for us, um, I think the next step, which we will initiate, but um, probably needs to be carried out by uh, younger generations as well, is to put Mayapan into more of a regional context. We know very little about its contemporary towns, even in the state of Yucatan or the nearby uh, affiliated areas of Campeche and Quintana Roo. We don't know how many towns were contemporary with Mayapan or their sizes. Um, and these are the hometowns of the confederated polities that came together to unite the Mayapan government. And, you know, we hardly know, but um, we're hoping to do a um, a full coverage survey using um, the very exciting new LIDAR um, aerial remote sensing technology this coming summer, which will give us um, a 100% look at a 50 kilometer radius of the immediate area around Mayapan and its um, satellite towns. But that's just the beginning. Um, most ancient uh, pre or pre-modern um, city-state networks um, were located at a distance of 20 kilometers from one another. So I think we really need, uh, there needs to be more work done on this period um, in Yucatan to really understand um, the size and complexity of the region, which is a mirror of the size and complexity of the political capital itself.